Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 19 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 18, go watch those first. And as a reminder, if you don't care about fitness, that's fine because these techniques, tips, and tricks work in every database you could possibly build, whether you're building a database for customers, orders, inventory, you name it. All right, let's get back to it. All right, like I said before, the more I use this database myself, the more I want to be able to say, hey, uh, I wanna add this feature, just kind of, you know, off the top of my head. Um, one thing I'd wanna do is, while I'm working on my meals here, I might wanna say, oh, I gotta, I gotta update this. I need a quick way to go to this mixed vegetables one can. So I like to make it so you can double click on a field and then it'll open it up over here, open the food list up. I don't wanna to have to come over here and have to find it, right? Mixed vegetables. Oh, there it is, okay. I wanna just quickly be able to go bam and there it is. Okay, and I'm running out of room here so I gotta kinda of do this a little bit. Oh, these are some other stuff I'm working on. Don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. You didn't see that. <laughs> Got some other shortcuts for some other databases I'm working on. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little double click event on this that'll open up this form and go right to that record. Now, I'm gonna show you something similar to the record set clone bookmark thing we did before, but it's kind of a shortcut. And it's a shortcut because it doesn't always work, but it should work fine in this situation. Okay, design view. Now this guy down here is my food ID. Now whenever I make something with a double click event, for those of you who haven't seen this in my previous lessons, I like to make it so that if this field does something when you double click on it, I change the color. I like to make them blue. So I like to pick like this light blue right there. It just gives the user maybe a little lighter than that. It just gives the user a little visual hint that, hey, if I double click on this, it'll do something, All right? All right, what's that something gonna be? Well, event, double click event, where are you? On double click right there, open up my editor, shrink my editor down <laughs> so I can actually work with it with you guys. Uh, when I'm doing coding on my own, I make it really Okay, so in here, I want to open up the food list F, right? So do command dot open form food list F. Yes, we're gonna assume it's not open first. We'll deal with it if it's open in just a minute. Okay, now, normally I had to go through the whole setting up a record set clone, setting the bookmark, find all that stuff. You can try this shortcut and it works most of the time, but it doesn't always work. That's why I showed you the proper way first. I don't like showing shortcuts first, even in my full course. I like to show this is the right proper way to do it. Then I'll show you the shortcut. Just keep in mind, this shortcut doesn't always work. All right, so here's the shortcut. You got that form open now. We're gonna go forms, food list F dot record set dot find first food ID equals, now we're dealing with a food combo, so it's gonna be and food combo. And I say this doesn't always work because the, the proper way is to set up a record set, set the bookmark, all that stuff. This might not work sometimes, especially if you're doing it within the form itself, then it always, it almost always has problems. Like if you're trying to do this search technique inside itself, but if you're doing it with a different form, especially one that you just opened, you're cool. Now, if the user has already you know, got the form open and they've applied a filter and they've applied a sort and they've done all, if the record can't be found, you might run into errors. But in this particular case, I know that I just opened the form. I should be able to get away with this. Uh, this also might not work in situations where you're trying to run this as part of like an open event, like a form open event, an on current event, when the record set hasn't fully loaded yet, you might run into problems. Okay, but at this case, in this point here, you know, the form is open, it's clean, it's fresh. This should work. Someone's beaming out this time, wow. <laughs> All right, anyways, let's test it. Save it, debug, compile. Okay, let's come back over here, close it, open it, and double click. Oh, look at it. Let's find the oil. Boom. See, it's working because the form's open. There's no, it, let's say someone had filtered it. Let's say they filtered it on dairy, right? or you can use the little box up here I built in the extended cut. If I now try to find this mixed vegetables, nothing will happen because there's a filter on it. So we'll deal with that too. But first thing I wanna do is, let me close this and reopen it again. Boom. First thing I wanna do is let's put the focus here because I'm looking at mixed vegetables here. I don't wanna be seeing just dairy or whatever over here. I want it to be right on that item. 
So that's a real easy fix to do. We've got it open. We're assuming we found it. Now I'm going to say food for foods, <laughs> forms, food list F, food description. Remember, food description is the one up top. Description is the one down below. Dot set focus. Okay. And let's see if that looks a little better. Let's go to the fish. There you go. See, now it looks exactly where we're at. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, again, the problem is if they've got it filtered already. And if I try to find something, it ain't going to work. Okay. So what I'm going to do it now, you could go through all kinds of extra programming. You could turn the filter off, get rid of the sort, blah, 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 blah. What I'm going to do is, and the user won't even see this happen. I'm just going to see if the form is open. If it is, close it and reopen it. That'll just reset it to its default state. It's super simple to do. It works nice and easy. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to say if is loaded is loaded as one of my functions. I'm pretty sure we covered it earlier, right? See, that's the problem is now we're in part, part 19. I don't remember what I've taught you. In my developer course, I remember all well, the things. Okay. Anyways, if that form is open, food list F, then we're just going to close it. Do command dot close AC form. What's the name of it? Food list F and an AC save yes. Okay. Okay, save it, save it, close it, close it, open it, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's already open and it's already filtered. Let's go for Naked Collagen Creamer. Boom, see? Closed it, opened it, went right there. Cleared all the filters, put you right where you wanted to be. If that's too much of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If that's too much of a flash for you, you can do that echo trick I taught you before. But again, be very careful because if this at all locks up or causes any problems you're gonna not you're gonna lock your database up okay or if you want you can manually turn the filter off that might be good enough for you too and honestly i think in this particular case let me think about it yeah we could probably get away with that let's see if we do not active that's still a filter yeah we could try just turning the. i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave both i'm gonna leave this code in here for you I'm going to, let's see if we could just, just turn the filter off. So we'll say this dot filter on equals false. That might, that might work just as well. But I mean, keep in, keep in mind in the future, if you add more stuff to this form. Okay, that works. And as much, and as less of a flashing. And if there is no filter, then it works, it works perfectly. All right. But if you add more stuff to this in the future that involves more than just a filter, that might cause a problem. And also for, for the members, we're not resetting these boxes up top too. So members, what you could try doing is you've got a food group filter, food description filter, and is active filter. You could set those to their default values, right? So for example, is active filter. I'll just show you right here. We'll have to do this just so they don't look like they're they're weird, right? And in this case, now that I'm going to be using forms food list F a lot, I'm going to say with forms food list F, and then I'm going to put all of this stuff inside that with. I don't usually pull out the with unless I'm going to be using it a lot. And with, right? And now we and here we can just say dot filter on equals false, right? dot record set. See, it makes it a little harder to read sometimes, but it saves you a lot of typing, right? And in here we could say, and I forgot the names of those fields already. We can say is active filter, right? Is active filter equals is active filter dot, or is, uh, yeah, we get, can we do default value? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Let's see, let's try it. Sometimes it only works with bound fields, let's see. Yeah, we can I find the reference form food list F. What? Oh, <laughs> anybody see the problem? <laughs> it's not open yet. <laughs> right? I tried to put the width outside the is loaded in the on the open. It's not open yet. All right. All right. So for this, we'd have to do this and then put it in here. And then tab over on this. And then end with, and then we'd need another one of them. 
down here. And do the same thing. And this is where you could also, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just define it as F and say set F equals forms food list F. And then you just say F dot record set F food description, that kind of stuff. All right, try it again. Nope, beep, 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 beep. And we don't need you. <laughs> and back it up okay see this is why you debug compile and this is why i should have run through all this before <laughs> all right open her up and there we go now if i put this on to both and i run this again i put it back oh let's see I put it in active of course oh i see i remember that problem okay here's, this, I, this is why i love stuff like this comes up that i haven't covered so the actual default value of this box all right is active in quotes uh where is it default value see active in quotes which is really not what you're looking for so you can use it if you want to you're probably better off just setting it instead of you know relying on this stuff up here so i'll just change it here to active like that and then just set the other ones manually so what is this food description filter? Copy. And then we'll go like this equals null. And the other one is food group filter. And that's a combo box getting your data from that. So we'll make it equal to zero. What's your default? Value? You don't have one. Okay. Zero should work. Uh, actually, we'll make it null too. We'll make that one null. All right. So that will get rid of any filter that's on there and then we'll also turn the filter off okay save it close it we'll throw in a debug compile once in a while close that close it close it all right here we go rice oil all right we're gonna put this back where it belongs when you make a design change it'll it'll save your settings too let's set this equal to fruits and we'll set this equal to not active and then I'll try to find mixed vegetables. Boom, there we go. All right, so we turned off the filter. We reset these to their default values. Members, I know it's a members feature. Sorry, 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 non-members. You're gonna have to once in a while watch a little bit of stuff for the members, but you see what I did there, right? These are the filter boxes. Oh, you know what we could do? We can utilize this button. Uh, yeah. All right, so this button, if you right click on it, build event, that turns the filters off. That does what basically what we just did. So we can just call this filter off button stuff, but I don't want to have to call it. You could make this public, but I don't like doing that. So let's just make this turn off filters and sub. And now we'll make this a public sub called turn off filters like that. And now since this is public, we can call it from outside the form. Turn off filters, right? So let's go where that was. We can close this, save changes, yes. We can go back into here, design view. We can go back into your on double click event. Da, 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 da. On double click. And now we don't need, let's see here. We don't need any of this really we don't need to because that because that button will turn the filters off right so we can just say right here forms food list f dot turn off filters so we're opening the form turning off the filters perfect and debug compile and that should be good let's test it okay ready meal let's go to rice one cup let's go to mixed vegetables let's go to fish Let's turn these on. Let's turn this on. Try to find olive oil. Oh, that's so much better. I, I had forgotten about that button there. You don't want to duplicate the code, right? You don't want this doing the same thing that this already does. And in the future, if you add another filter thing in here, let's say you want to filter by calories or protein or whatever, you remember to add it to this and this form, you forget about that code that's in there. That's why we don't duplicate code, right? All right, so that's that's a pretty cool trick. Um, so that's a good little shortcut too, right? This guy, 
just record set that fine first. Generally, I only use that if I'm dealing with a different form that's already loaded, right? It loads it here. Oh, and now that I'm looking at this, we can, if is low, since we're just turning off the filters, we're not closing it. Here, we can make this an else, else, open it, right? And then set the record set and then set the focus. Let's see here. Yep. Okay, but keep in mind, this doesn't always work. Sometimes you got to use that, that record set clone trick that I showed you last time. That one for sure works, well, 99% of the time. This one works most of the time. <laughs> most being more than half. <laughs> and see, now we're back to why I don't mess with the width most of the time, unless I got a whole bunch of them. Because now I'm back to not needing it. I got just two of them down here. Got one up here and two down there. And the width, I think the width actually makes it harder to read sometimes. Right? I think that is, this is simpler to read. You get what it's going, what's going on here. If I had like six, seven, eight items, then yeah, I'll pull that out. But now I can clearly see what's, you know, it just, I don't know, it just looks better. All right, that's it. Save it, close it, close it. All right, so I know last time, I think last time I mentioned that we're gonna deal with the problem of being able to add an item when there's no meal, right? See, all right, we will definitely do that in, let's see, today's what, Thursday the 7th. So we'll deal with that problem on Monday. Tomorrow's gonna be Quick Queries Friday. Monday, we'll get to part 20 and we'll, we'll start with this problem here, promise. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I'll promise, okay. It has to deal with a referential integrity thing. I don't wanna call it a bug, but I think it's a bug, but you gotta know how, how to deal with this issue, but we'll get to it on Monday, all right? So that's it, that's your quick, quick, quick queries. That's your tech help video. <laughs> I got quick queries in the brain now. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Give me a like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.